welcome back to the Afternoon Express Kitchen where we still have Miss Sassy Bakes in the loft. Now she's been whipping up some beautiful decadent cakes here. Some sweet treats for you to try at home. Now we're already quite well on our way, Absolutely. Sassy, when it comes to putting this together. So before the break, we were already incorporating the elements that create the batter. Okay, so this is our vanilla butter cake. And remember we did the ratio of three flour to two of liquid, okay. right? Fully incorporated. Now we're gonna um, prepare it and get it into a greaseproof pan. Okay. Okay, well greased pan. And then it will be Let baked me. on 180 for 30 minutes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I'll me. put that aside and we'll do that towards the end. There we go. When we get perfect. the other cakes in as well. 100%. Awesome. Let's start. <laughs> okay. okay. So now we're busy with our date and caramel cake. Okay. Let's start with our butter first. Nice butter. soft butter. Always ensure that your butter is at room temperature Lovely. so that you can have this consistency, nice oh. and smooth. And when you do decide to maybe pop it in the microwave, if it's a little bit hot, watch it. Mm. You know, don't just put, leave it in the microwave because you're gonna be stuck with melted butter. No, so slow and steady, slow. keep your eye on it. Five seconds, you know, interval. So just move goes. it around a little okay. bit and, you know, and play with it. So there we go. That. And we're going to get in our brown sugar. Okay, so in essence, same step as well. There we Bra go. Uh, creaming our sugar and our butter together. There we go. And this, this time it's some brown sugar. Absolute baby. brown sugar, baby. Now, it being brown sugar, what's the main difference uh, between the whites that we used in the first Brown recipe? sugar is more used for caramelization. Mm -hmm. So like caramel cakes, anything that's got to do with caramel, brown sugar. Brown sugar is your baby. <laughs> Love that. Okay, so then Fantastic. we just work it through, make sure that it's incorporated quite nicely as we did there the we first go. recipe. Copy okay. paste. There we go, honey. That's so what we do. You said this is a date and caramel cake. This is a date and caramel cake, right? So what we've done is, so we've taken, we, we, once we've, we've creamed our butter and our sugar, firstly, we've Right over here, we've also got our, our dates, finely chopped dates, mm. with your one cup of hot water poured over and your one teaspoon, teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, right? And you're gonna allow this to rest while stirring and allow it to cool. So this is nice and cool right now. So it's perfect for us to use. I also see though on our side, Dumi, yeah. um, as much as you've got a more chunky mixture, Sassy, yeah. Dumi and I have it in a more pureated form. Is yeah. this just making it easier to maneuver and work with in the batter? So what happens is, if you want to do a chunky one, then this is for people that really love to taste a little bit of date. Okay. Some people like the, the flavor of date cake, but they don't like to actually taste it. Mm. So this yeah. is, this is also what they call a sticky toffee cake. Ah. So you can even do this with a beautiful glaze on top. Okay. okay. That, is, that is perfect. So now let's add our eggs. Okay. Same procedure as last year. <laughs> Madame. Same procedures every year. There we Sophie. go. <laughs> okay, perfect. So one, one egg. egg at a time. There we go. Creaming. And I was a bit too excited in the first part. So nice <laughs> running ahead. Oh, there we go. So nice and slow. Into the, and also another thing I've heard about, because I'm not the most advanced baker, and I say this every single time, South Africa, I love baked treats, yeah. but not so much with the baking part. One thing I do know that they always mention is whenever you're going to be using your butter at room temperature, your eggs should also be at room temperature. Always. All your ingredients should always be at room temperature. Okay, perfect. So we've Fantastic. creamed together the, the um, eggs, butter, sugar, and, and this yeah. is the consistency we want. Fantastic. Beautiful. Okay, awesome. I'm loving it. <laughs> Vanilla awesome. essence, Vanilla. extract, whatever tickles your fancy, or you can do some caramel essence as well. All right, so this part is done. Okay, honey, let me just get my spoon and get everything off. There we go, fantastic. So now we can add our dates. Okay. So, so you guys, is, yours is pureed, which yeah. is perfect. Okay. So um, you will get that nice toffee flavor. I will get maybe some toffee and a little bit of date, like a chunky, more chunkier version. Mm. Okay, so same procedure with most baking. Wet ingredients one side, dry ingredients one side. Yes, that's And that's for this it. recipe, we are using self-raising flour. Self-raising flour, that's 100%. If someone doesn't have self-raising flour, what um, can, how can they make, can they make it themselves at home? Uh, what, how do you make your own self-raising flour? Yes, you can. You can, uh, you can make your own self-raising flour by adding um, some baking powder in, in cake flour. Okay. Oh. Awesome stuff. And do you want this to be, okay, I can see, I can see a couple of specks of dates in yours. Yeah, I was going to say how well yeah. uh, mixed in should it yeah. be, but I suppose this is also good. Let's have a look. More? A little bit more mine. Okay. Yeah. Mine? Fine. 
I'm proud awesome. of you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not completely clueless when it comes to the kitchen. No, there and we I suppose go. I've got these cook-alongs, though, to thank, because essentially this is an opportunity for me to get my hands dirty, <laughs> not just speak on a high horse, actually get in there. <laughs> you know, and get in there. And get in there, I love that. So then what's the next step? Okay, our next step, always, like I say, well-sifted and also using your whisk to incorporate beautiful air and making sure that the flower is nice and loose. I love that. Right? We want fluffy sponges. Yeah. So what we're going to do now, we're going to incorporate the flower okay. a little bit at a time. Okay. Okay. So maybe maybe do this in, in parts of four. Okay? Okay. And then I'm, and gonna, I'm going to be using my whisk now. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's, yeah, that's what you know entirely, it gets it's entirely <laughs> up to you, but it's just like for me, it's just so much easier now. It gets okay. serious now when we're okay. changing your tent. <laughs> Girl. And is there a reason for mixing the dry into the wet and not the other way around, as in the wet into the dry? Mm. Is there a specific procedure and reason for that? or you, not, you know, you, you can do it the other way around. I prefer doing it this way because it's easier for me to have a look and see the consistency of my batter okay. and, see, and actually seeing the flour dissolve into the batter and you know, incorporate into it. Uh, then you're sure. You're not, you, you don't have any questions as to what sank all the way to the bottom. I love that. Okay. And then this is a date and caramel cake you've mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, if we were to add nuts into this, that would also work, yes. right? Yes. Which nuts would work, I mean, would pair well with the dates, I guess? Walnuts. Walnuts? Definitely, without a doubt. Okay. Walnuts. Mm. You know, all my, all nut also goes well with, I uh, can't remember, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Mm. But it's, it's walnut and banana. Oh, yeah. I never, because I think that's what's bringing me to my next question regarding the recipes. How do you even come up with these recipes? I mean, what, what inspired the caramel and date cake specifically? Because I wouldn't have thought to mix those two flavors together. You know, because I come from a Malay heritage, so ah. I've, I'm trying to incorporate really, and the recipes that I've come up with as things that I've loved as a child. And I know people always make reference to, I want the old fashioned cakes, the cakes that my grandmother used to make, uh -huh. right? So that is what I'm trying to do. You're trying to bring So we're trying to bring back the old with a twist of the new. Okay. So, we, so, we, it's, so it's all that old recipes. And this recipe was passed on to me by my grandmother. Oh, wow. And you know, the amazing thing is that what I've done is they used to just make it in a pan and there you go, there's your, there's your date cake. <laughs> so I've tried to, you know, put the elements to it. Mm. Cut it in a square, add a chocolate chard, do some caramel cream cheese with it. Do something different, yeah. you know? Adding some caramel essence instead of vanilla Ooh. essence. I get you. Know? you. Now, <laughs> Sassy, I'm on. On my, I'm on my very last um, flour, flour yeah. mixture, I suppose. Is this the consistency that we're looking towards getting Honey, at this stage happy, of the game? happy with that. That looks absolutely beautiful. It's definitely thickening up here. Fantastic. So now we've got our, our wild grease pan. Okay, and there's also a debate about when baking something, putting something into a baking tray. Do you yeah. spray it with a uh, non-stick spray? Do you put baking uh, paper? Do you put flour? What's the trick to make sure it doesn't stick? Everybody's got their own version of doing things. Okay. The sassy version is spraying it, okay. <laughs> cooking spray, at the bottom. So when you line your paper yeah. at the bottom of the tray, then at least it sticks. Okay. Because, I mean... If you're going to put a paper, a dry paper in a dry pan, it's going to, ah, it's going to come loose. So sense. it gets to stick. Then also make sure, even though it's grease proof paper or baking paper that you're using, make sure that you spray it, not too much, just in order when you have to take the, remove the paper after baking, yes. it just makes things easier for you. Okay. So then it's not, it, you're protected both ways. Both ways. And also try to always spray your sides evenly. Because mm. people neglect the sides. It's so always just the bottom. People neglect their sides. There we go. Perfect. Okay. This looks like a very nice and ah, yummy on light. the tummy, baby. <laughs> I am so ready for these sweet treats. I mean, um, we always speak about what type of sweet tooth do you have and what kind of flavors do you love in the kitchen. But this is something for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Would the same recipe work if you were to do muffins or, or smaller cakes? Yes. Or, okay, so it doesn't even have to change that much. You can it just... You can use exactly the same ingredients. You can utilize this ingredient. You can do a 15 centimeter double layer cake. You can make a 23 centimeter double layer cake. You can do, you can use this pan. Always bearing in mind, when at the size of your pan, that will also change the, the time okay. of how long the cake needs to bake. Okay. Right? Right, and so how long would this cook then? This This one should take approximately 45 minutes because it will be higher. Okay. Okay. At what temperature? 
180. 180. The Here golden <laughs> number to get a goldenly beautiful cake. Now, thank you so much, Sassy. We are halfway through the show. You yeah. still have so much more, though, up your sleeve. We've got our vanilla cake, tick. We've got our caramel and date cake, tick, coming up. C caramel butter cake. Ooh. We're all into the caramel, you know, we just want, we just want the caramel to flow, honey. Delicious. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that as we keep dancing into these.